Hey y'all, what's going on? I'm here for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season five, the season finale. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> and I know you guys are probably thanking God too, because I was over this shit about like five episodes ago. I'm just like, you know, like it was just dragging on and dragging on. And I'm just like, what is this shit gonna be over with? Like, I can't take it no more. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, like I said, it's over with. It's a wrap. Um, I don't know if you guys paid attention during the commercial break, but it looks like they're going to give us a bullshit ass reunion, meaning that they're, I guess it looks like, like, you know, they're going to interview like a couple of people at a time or one person at a time or whatever. And, um, I'm low key tight about that because it's just like, no, make these motherfuckers sit together and face the, you know, sit in the room together and face the goddamn music. I mean, I. I guess I can understand because, you know, uh, you know, we know at this point that the tension is real, real thick um, between, you know, some of the cast members or whatever. And they don't, I guess maybe they don't want to have a repeat, I think, from season three reunion when, you know, Jocelyn, you know, went off the handle on everybody. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, uh, I just, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know how I feel about it. I know how I feel about it. I know I feel low-key tight about the shit. But I just, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. How y'all feel about that? I just, I don't know, y'all. But anyways, let's just get into this episode. Um, Arian, you know, we start off with Arian and K. Michelle. You know, Arian, she decides that she doesn't need advice or whatever. You know, as far as her music is concerned, she just needs to do her music. And, you know, K, but that's when K. Michelle comes in and they talk about, you know, K. Michelle leaving Arian in New York or whatever, this, then third. K. Michelle, she apologizes and everything and says that, you know, um, once the venue is over with, like, you got to be quick. You got to be out, you know, be out, you know, out there because, you know, people could come up to your car, this, then third, whatever, whatever. They squash that away. Boom. So, Arian, she, you know, has, you know, she's talking about how, you know, K inspired her, inspired her, you know, like really inspired her when they went to New York and everything. And, you know, Arian saying, you know, she's saying that she uh, has been recording and she's going to do a listening party or whatever. But here's the catch. She only got, you know, one and a, one and a half songs recorded. Not two full songs, one and a half songs. You know, K. Michelle, she's, you know, confused, and she's like, Aryan, like, one and a half songs, like, what the fuck, you know, like, like, what is this, you know what I'm saying, and, um, you know, she was like, you call this a listening, you know, she pretty much was like, you call this a listening party or whatever, you know, this, then the third, and, you know, Aryan, Aryan, she was like, okay, well, I guess you could say more like a sneak peek, or what, you know, she tried to change it up and say a sneak peek, I was like, yeah, you change that shit up real quick because you know that shit sounded ridiculous saying listening party with one and a half songs. Girl. <laughs> but anyways, um, what else happened? Um, oh yeah, Arian, she tells Kay who all is coming, you know, Mimi and all of them or whatever. You know, and, um... K. Michelle, she has an excuse as to why she can't be there or whatever. But she wants Arian to embrace Jocelyn. She wants Arian to embrace Jocelyn and wants her to invite Jocelyn to the listening party. So you want Arian to invite somebody, invite somebody that nobody likes, that nobody gets along with whatsoever. Somebody that we know starts some controversy. And then on top of that, you're not going to even be there. But you want her to invite somebody you consider to be your friend. And Arian, you dumb for just going along with it. But I'm going to get on you, and you know, later on. You know, um, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to get on her later on. But anyways, um, next scene we have is Rashida or whatever. You know, they're having a, like, cookout or whatever, this, that, and the third uh, Kelsey is changing her attitude, and I think they said they let her perform. Did she, did they actually show her performing? Sure, I, I, don't, I don't know, I won't pay any attention. They, did they actually show her performing, though? Or did, or did Rashida just, or did Rashida just talk about her performing? But anyways, um, you know, Charlene and Ernest, they're having a conversation, 
or whatever, this, then, the third, Scrappy, he walks up, and, you know, he kind of, like, you know, Ernest is explaining to him, this is not what you think it is, you know, it's not like that, you know, Charlene has just been a good help to me and everything, this, then, the third, and then Mama D, she shows up, and she realizes that she was overreacting about, you know, Charlene, and realizes that she was just trying to help her and Ernest, or whatever, so Mama D apologizes, and I was like, <laughs> Mama D apologizing? Oh, girl. <laughs> but yeah, she apologizes to, you know, Mama Charlene or whatever. They hug it out and everything. But she has something for Ernest's ass. You know, she pulls out a, a, a will, pretty much, and has him read it out loud. And that pretty much, uh, Mama D only is on, you know, Mama D is only going to give him $1. And she pulls the dollar out, too. And she got the dollar all nice and framed and everything. I said, Mama D, how you go from, you know, being mature and making up with, you know, Shirlene to reverting back to being immature and, girl, <laughs> Mama D, you wrong for that. You was wrong for that shit right there. And, um... Scra you know, Scrappy, he's like, you know, damn, Ernest can't win for losing. You know what I'm saying? He can't win for shit or whatever, you know, and this, then, third. Um, I just, that, that was so fucked up. That was so fucked up when she did that. Um, next up, we have Stevie J and Jocelyn. Uh, they have a conversation about the same old bullshit. You know what I'm saying? About Jocelyn taking a picture with Rick Ross and, you know, uh, Stevie ain't been treating Jocelyn right over the past five years and these alleged kids that Jocelyn done threw on Stevie J. And speaking of Jocelyn, I forgot, that I've been meaning to talk about this shit. That was real fucked up for her and Mimi's cousin to sit up here and say that Stevie J was molesting his daughter. That, that was some fucked up shit to do. Like, really. That just, oh. Uh, I don't. I don't even want to get all into that because I'm. I'm. I'm gonna get mad. <laughs> um. Anyways. Um. What else happened? I mean, they was just going back and forth or whatever. You know. He's you know talking to her, asking her questions. She being nonchalant or whatever, and she's you know she takes a rose from the table or whatever and starts picking it. One kid, two kid, three kid. She was like. The, um, a number of rose petals on this, um, rose is the amount of kids you have. And I was like, just the pettiness never ends on this show. Like, um, you know, um, I don't even remember what he, what, what his reply was to that. It just, it, the whole scene was just doing too much. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of it, they both come to the conclusion, like, fuck you and fuck you or whatever. You know, Stevie, he talks about, you know, how she let Dawn back in after Dawn dogged her out. And, of course, you know, we feel him on, on that position. But it's like, why is we still talking about this same bullshit? Y'all, you know, she feel her way, you feel your way. So why, I mean, I don't really see shit changing. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, as Stevie is walking away, he calls her fat and, you know, all this other shit. I'm just like, no, was that really necessary? You know what I'm saying? And she calls him a bitch or whatever. And Stevie says, you know, he glad he didn't marry her for real, let alone have kids with her. And I said, ooh, well, I mean, mm. I mean, I mean, if that is his kid, because I, I'm still, you know, the judgment is still up for me as to whether that's, you know, Stevie's kid or not. Not trying to, really, I'm really not trying to be funny. But, I mean, they've been separated so callly for, you know, the past few months. But then again, being separated, I mean, just because they say they separated or ain't been together or whatever, that don't mean that they still couldn't have been hooking up. But, anyways, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's still up for question for me whether that's his baby or not. But, anyways, um... <laughs> He, you know, he sent up here with that pimp talk stuff. Y'all know how he do talking about some, you know, he's still the boss of her at the end of the day or whatever, just that third. Moving on from that, Mama D, she's performing her song with a uh, young, you know, with young jock in that order. Mama D having fun living life. You know, I ain't going to, I ain't even going to do it with her today. Um, <laughs> Anyways, Ernest, he's not there to support. He's probably still mad about the whole, 
you know, Will situation, I wouldn't have showed up either. Shit. You try to embarrass me in front of everybody at the fucking cookout, you know, with this one dollar, you know. They, oh, yeah. Speaking of that situation, it was so funny when Mama D was like, don't spend it all in one place now, you hear? I'm like, really, a dollar, Mama D? He can only spend it in one place. I mean, I, well, really, I don't even know. What can you get with the dollar these days? Oh, well, they do get the 35-cent chips or whatever. You can't even get a motherfucking, you know, get some off the dollar menu these days with a damn dollar because, you know, they add tax and shit. So I was just like, <laughs> anyways, you know, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. I apologize, y'all. But anyways, um, I wouldn't have been there neither. You just try to embarrass me like that. Like, fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> anyways, Mama D keeps on press, press, um, pressing Scrappy about the Betty Idol situation. Uh, Scrap lets, you know, Scrappy, she lets him know, like, I'm not checking for Betty or whatever. Um, you know, I still want the BAM. I want her back. You know, Jock, he's being supportive about it, this, that, and the third. Um, Mama D, she kind of just, you know, y'all know how Mama D do. She ain't really with it, but then she kind of learns to kind of sort of accept it or whatever and accept the fact that Scrappy is, you know, grown, um, grown or whatever, this, that, and third. Um, anyways... Moving on from that, KK, she has a birthday party. You know, she has the birthday party for King and everything. Sierra comes, but she shows up with uh, J. Nick's ugly ass. <laughs> and, you know, KK, she looking like, who is this? Like, you know what I'm saying? And Sierra, like, you know, this is my friend and everything. And, you know, um, KK, you know, she's saying how J. Nix and Scrap is supposed to be friends this, then, third. And now Sierra messing with him. You know, why Scrap locked up, like, that's fucked up and everything, this, that, and third, you know. I mean, and, it, and, it, and like I said, it's not a good look, you know, everybody on this show just, you know, messing with everybody, you know what I'm saying? It, it just, it, it, it isn't a good look, but, you know, whatever, moving on. KK, she asks for Jay Nix to leave and everything, and um, she doesn't want any outsiders. She just wants, you know, family to be there. So Jay Nix respects it, Sierra respects it, you know, he leaves and everything, uh, KK told Tierra straight up, he not even cute. And she said, I just want the best for you, bitch. <laughs> um, but I did, but I did hear that now their so-called, you know, reunion is no more. Because I did hear that KK had said some real fucked up shit about Tierra. Um, I don't know if this some shit she said a couple of months back and it's, and it's just now surfacing on the web or if she recently has said some bad shit about Tierra or whatever but yeah I heard she said a lot of fucked up shit about Tierra but um anyways um sass he shows up or whatever um Tierra talks about how she's not ready to take King to you know the jail to see you know scrap or whatever um King talks to scrap I don't know if they're I guess they talking on the phone or whatever like having an actual phone conversation and, you know, um, King, he starts to cry and everything. And I, I just, oh, I feel so bad for that boy. Like, scrap, this is all your fucking fault. Having that boy, you know, crying and shit because you gone and you can't be there. You know what I'm saying? I just feel so bad for him, but it just, yeah, it's, it's his daddy's fault. It's his fault. You know what I'm saying? But, um, anyways, moving on from that, Stevie J, he's doing a photo shoot for um his you know wine or whatever i guess he's having coming out or whatever and delicious from the flavor of love she's um one of his models and mimi she shows up you know he invites her there or whatever stevie says that he's not mad that mimi put him on child support he's mad that she allowed jocelyn to come in between them or whatever in the co-parenting you know situation they had going on and, um, you know, they start talking about Jocelyn and how she tried to fuck up, you know, their relationship as parents and everything. And, um, you know, pretty much he's over it and all this other stuff. Oh, this is when he said that he was grateful that he didn't have kids with her. Not the other scene that I was talking about with him and Jocelyn. But anyways, whatever. It ain't that important. <laughs> Either way, he still said it in this episode. But anyways, um... Stevie pretty much wants to get on the better page with Mimi or whatever. Um, and they hug it out, whatever, cool. Moving on from that. Um, 
hold on, let me make sure I'm, okay, yeah. I get, I get confused with this notebook sometimes, which direction it goes in. Anyways, I know y'all don't care about that. Um, anyways, uh, Scrappy, he brings, you know, the BAM somewhere, you know, talking about her career or whatever, you know, where, you know, he brings her to a venue where I guess he, you know, saying that she could perform or whatever, you know, this, that, and the third, and how, you know, BAM is always talking about how he don't ever support her, so he's trying to support her and everything, this, that, and the third. You know, Rashida and Kirk, they show up, um, but they don't have no idea what's going on. Um, Ernest and Mama D, Tammy, Bambi's parents and other people, they come or whatever. And, you know, he asks for um, um, Bambi, she, he asks Bambi's mom for his blessing, I mean, for her blessing to um, marry Bambi and everything, and she's, you know all with it supported for whatever and he pops the question and we are like i said we already know they engage and everything so kudos to them once again um <laughs> anyways moving on we get tommy she goes to an actual therapist this time <laughs> and not no damn ballerina class um but no she um she's talking to the therapist and she says that she needs a drink and you know uh the doctor asked if she have a drink already today or whatever this day and the third. And Tommy said that she had a few shots, but it's not like a Tommy day or whatever. This day and the third where she, I guess she would probably accumulate more alcohol. Um, Tommy, she talks about scrap and you know how he's locked up and he's the only one who pleased her. But at the same time, he hurt her with everything that he did. Um, she's a sister of seven kids or whatever. Um, she's been in group homes, um, she's been, you know, in juvie, she had her first baby in, in county, or whatever, um, she also talks about her dad, and, you know, how she had a fucked up relationship with him, and pretty much it seemed like, you know, her and one of her sisters, you know, he didn't fuck with her, they, he didn't, he didn't fuck with them like that, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, people tell her all the time that she's like, her daddy like she's like a split image of her father and it's crazy because he never was there he was locked up for 17 years and a year after he got out of jail he he you know he got killed and they never really had time to like re you know like to reckon you know to try to reconcile you know and um patch up their relationship and um she says that she pretty much wants to you know escape her past and you know so it doesn't hinder her from her success and everything and I know, you know, we feel how we feel about Tommy or whatever. But I did kind of feel her in this scene when she started, you know, telling her story more. And, this, you know, the things that she's been through or whatever. And um, I hope that she does get the help that she needs. You know what I'm saying? Um, Now we get to the damn listening party. Or the uh, sneak preview party, I should call it, with Arian. So, Arian, she apologized to um, D. Smith or whatever for storm, storming out on her. So, her and Betty Idol, they're there to support. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my notes trying to... Okay, yeah. So, everybody else, they show up or whatever. Um, you know, they're, you know it, mine is Jocelyn. She hadn't come at this particular moment. But, um, you know, they're listening to the song and everything. And D. Smith even says that the song was nice or whatever. This, that, and the third. And it didn't sound bad. It didn't sound bad. It was all right. You know what I mean? Um, Mimi, she's proud of Arian and everything. And this is when the stepsisters come in. A.K.A. Jocelyn and Dawn. They show up or whatever. The mood immediately changes. Ra, you know, Rashida, she peeps some shit. She is like, you know, they came after the song, you know, after the song was played or whatever. So, they didn't come to support Arian. They came for some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jocelyn has an attitude. Of, you know, she's not in a good mood. And she says that, you know, uh... She don't understand why K. Michelle thought this was a good idea for me to come to uh, this listening party this day and the third or whatever. Um, Mimi says that, you know, Jocelyn is jealous of, you know, her and Stevie J because Stevie J 
is going to always have love for her, real love or whatever, which that is true. Stevie J is going to always love me. Even if they never get back together, he is going to always have, you know, real love for Mimi. You know what I'm saying? But I just want Mimi to, it's okay to still have love for a person, but I just need for Mimi to, I just need for Mimi to fall out of love with Stevie J. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, um, anyways, um, Arian, she starts regretting, um, inviting Jocelyn or whatever because the tension is so thick at this point. Jocelyn calls Mimi fake or whatever, and they start going back and forth. Jocelyn throws a drink in Mimi's face, and, like, Mimi just, she just took that shit. I'm sorry. See, this is how you know this is some Mona Scott Young bullshit. Because I don't know what bitch in their right fucking mind would just sit there and, you know, in real life, would just sit there and allow a bitch to throw a drink on them. I don't care how classy you, the classiest bitch would not let that shit go down. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just, like, she just, like, I'm tired of them making Mimi look like this. Like, just like a helpless pup. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, Jocelyn, she's saying, you know, see, of course, you know, security, they come in between them. Jocelyn is saying that Mimi is mad because, you know, she married Stevie J and all this other stuff. And Mimi was like, bitch, you're delusional. Y'all are not fucking married and all this other stuff. Um... Arian said something to Mimi or whatever about, you know, like, come on, let's go. And um, Mimi was like, no, you need to escort that bitch out or whatever, this day and the third. Um, Mimi, she kind of goes off on Arian a little bit. Like, you really thought this shit was going to go well, whatever, this day and the third. I can't blame her, you know, Arian in the corner, you know, crying and shit like that. It's like, bitch, you practice on your damn self listening to K. Michelle's ass. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Mimi, what caught my attention, that was Mimi, she was like, you know, I already whipped your ass once or whatever. And I was like, when did this, and like, and, and here's the crazy thing. This is not my first time hearing Mimi say that about Jocelyn. I don't know if you guys remember, you guys probably didn't even catch it then. I think it was season two reunion, if I'm not mistaken. Mimi and Jocelyn was going back and forth. About, I mean, so I'm pretty sure something dealing with Stevie J. They were going back and forth. And um, Mimi had said then that she had whooped Jocelyn's ass. And I'm just like, and even then, I was like, when did this shit happen? Like, is this on tape somewhere? Like, I need to see Mimi whooping somebody, especially Jocelyn's ass. I was just, I mean, you know, Mimi, she do, she kind of just as muscular and shit as Jocelyn, you know, um, appears to be too. So, I mean, I just, but it's just the way Mimi is presented on this show is just like, what? You know what I'm saying? So, I just, like I said, you guys, like I said, you guys probably don't, you know, probably didn't even catch it back then during the season two reunion. I remember Mimi saying that shit. So, her, hearing her say it again, I was just like, she, does she really whoop Jocelyn's ass? Is there some footage out there that we need to see? You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, um, yeah, I just, I'm still confused about that. I'm just, yeah, if y'all, if y'all can, y'all go back and try to watch. I believe, I definitely believe it was season two reunion. It had to be season two reunion when Mimi had said that shit. But I, like I said before, I remember her saying that shit one time before. And, yeah, yeah, if y'all can, y'all go back and watch season two reunion and, 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 and see if y'all catch that shit with, uh, of Mimi saying that. I want to say, yeah, yeah, it has to be season two reunion. I don't think she said that on season one reunion. It, either way, it's either one of those reunions, but I'm pretty sure it's season two. And like I said, like I just said, I was confused then when she said it. And I'm confused now with her still saying that she whooped Jocelyn's ass. But, um, yeah. That was pretty much the end of that. We have, you know, the closing out of the show, whatever. Everybody's talking about what they doing. Carly, she's having a new fashion line or whatever. Um, Tammy, she's packing, but of course we know her and Walker are back together. 
Um, I did see the interview with them on the Breakfast Club. Tammy says that she's not pregnant, so to clear up any confusion. Uh, Mimi, she's into interior design, and that's what she wants to get into next. Um, I didn't write down everybody else else's goals or whatever this day and the third. But, um, Tierra, she's pregnant again. I don't know if this is baby number five, baby n number six, but I'm just like, God damn, girl, slow down. I mean, Tierra seems like she's a nice girl, but she do seem like she get around a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Do any of her kids have the same dad? And I'm not even trying to be funny, but I'm just like, do any of her kids have the same dad? Or is it just... Uh, but, I mean, you know, congrats, girl, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure she's going to make sure, you know, this one is straight just like she makes sure. It, just like it seems like she makes sure that her other kids are straight, too. So, yeah, congrats to you on that, Sierra. Um, hey, I mean, that's all I can really say on that. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I got for y'all. Um, Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back. And I will see you guys in the next video.